Uh, welcome to this uh, Hypothesis webinar on grading using our LMS app. I'm Jeremy Dean, the Director of Education at Hypothesis. We're going to be talking today about Hypothesis Collaborative Annotation Tool as it plays within learning management systems and our new grader functionality. Um, there's a, the link on the slide is not public. Uh, Nate, could you, I guess I need to do that. Um, let me get out of here quick. Thanks for the note. I think I can fix it. You can? All right. If you can't, uh, let me know. But thanks for the heads up about that, Joe. Um, so, yeah, where are we there? <clears throat> uh, you can, I was just about to say, uh, open this deck through the bit.ly link there at the bottom. Hopefully Nate's going to rectify the fact that it's not public yet. Uh, thanks for the note folks, um, but just for posterity's sake, uh, the bit.ly link is bit.ly slash grade anno. Um, and you don't need it to, at this presentation right now, um, but there are some links that might be helpful down the road in terms of getting started with the Hypothesis LMS app and checking out our documentation around uh, grading. Nate, should I just quickly get out of present mode to open this? It should be okay. shared now. Okay. Let us know if you guys can open it now. It's at uh, bit.ly slash grade anno. So here's a little outline for our, our, our morning together or our hour together this morning. And now for a brief introduction to the hypothesis organization and what we've been doing um, in education uh, and annotation for teaching and learning and talk about the hypothesis LMS app. I'm going to move through those first five sections pretty quickly because I think some of you may be used to my stick um, and then really get down into the grading uh, the new grading feature that we've launched across uh, the LMSs. Um, I'll have some time for discussion at the end. I really think this is the beginning of a conversation and work to be done around um, what does it mean to grade annotations? How do we grade annotations? How do we grade annotations in different contexts? So um, the discussion piece will be important today and ongoing collaboration will be important about you know, how, how, we, how we move forward with this together. Um, all right, briefly about the Hypothesis organization. We're an open source software shop. Uh, we develop uh, annotation software for the web. Um, we're here to talk about our education tool, um, but we have an open source standard-based browser extension that's free. Hypothesis accounts are free. Um, they lack, uh, the, the, the wild uh, version of Hypothesis lacks some of the key functionality that the LMS app provides that streamlines things for educators. Um, which is why we focused on our LMS uh, app and its development and we'll continue to do so for as an enterprise offering for, for educational institutions. Um, but it's still open source code um, and really our, our company operates by a wide range of open, open principles. Um, and in the spirit of openness, here's the team. Uh, I want to give a shout out to everybody there so you can see the humans behind the technology. Um, it's a really amazing group of folks um, already this morning troubleshooting some things for me around uh, the, the LMS app and how it's functioning in a couple different places. Rapid response, very much appreciate that. Nate Angel is uh, on the call today. I think you can probably see him, co-host. Um, and my other colleague, Michael, I saw joined as well. Um, so they'll be in the chat. If you ask questions, they can, they can respond. Um, so annotation is ed tech. Uh, Again, many of you have heard this before, but when, when I taught high school and college English, uh, I used to hand out this poem by Billy Collins and Odin and Annotation Marginalia at the beginning of every term. Um, from day one, I really wanted to make a point of encouraging students to write in their books, because um, I believe that annotation was the most critical practice that would influence their performance in almost every aspect of the course, um, the class preparation, the test taking, the paper writing, everything. Um, in my opinion, there's perhaps nothing more essential to learning than reading. Um, and there's nothing more central to reading than annotation. So as Billy Collins says, we've all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen if only to show we not just laze in an armchair turning pages, we press the thought into the wayside, planted an impression along the verge. So this technology of annotation has been around for a while. It's, not, it's nothing new, right? Folks have been writing in books, scholars, students have been writing in books uh, for centuries. Um, but as, the, as books and other assigned readings move online, we lose this essential ability to practice uh, active reading skills, uh, to write in the margins, to, to you know, be better and more attentive readers, more active and critical readers. Um, and a large part of what Hypothesis do is, does is bringing that um, you know, age-old technology of annotation uh, to digital writing, uh, to digital readings. 
online. And what that looks like uh, is this. Any website, article, or ebook, or document, piece of multimedia can have multiple layers of annotation. Um, you can have that traditional private layer of marginal notes. Um, you can also find a public layer uh, for commentary on, on documents. And you can create any number of, of private groups, a group for your colleagues, maybe you're teaching the same book, or a new publication has come out in your field of uh, specialization, and any number of private groups for your uh, individual courses, your fall courses, your spring courses, your fall courses the following year. So all of these different layers of annotation can exist upon a single document. So we've been playing in education for a while now. I was brought on to start the education department at Hypothesis. Um, and uh, we've always listened to our users and to our teachers about what they find useful about the tool. That's how we sort of focus in on our value proposition and how we um, decide on what features to do next, which is why we release grade book feature uh, integration because it really is something that teachers have been asking about for a while. Um, but there's sort of three different ways that uh, teachers talk about um, hypothesis helping them in their teaching and helping their students in their learning. And the first is nothing new. It's this idea of, um, you know, hypothesis makes reading active. This is what annotation has always done. Um, but as books move online, it becomes even harder for students to be active readers. They're more easily distracted. They're less engaged. They tend to skim rather than read closely. So maintaining that active reading practice through annotation in the digital space is uh, part of what hypothesis provides for classrooms. Um, annotation has been shown in research to sort of counteract um, the trend of, of skimming and disengagement from online reading um, and reinstilling re and reinvigorating uh, critical reading practices in the digital age. The second piece is new. Um, hypothesis makes reading social. So those marginal notes that we took as, as youngins in our, in our books, um, as, as good students that we were, um, were private. They were just for us. Um, and now with the affordances of sort of networked online culture, we can share our notes. We're not reading uh, the text alone anymore. If we're confused, we can ask for help. Uh, we can have conversations that help us more deeply engage and extend the course material. And I honestly can't say it better than this uh, comment from a student of Robin DeRosa's at Plymouth State several years ago who blogged about her experience using Hypothesis and she writes, uh, hypothesis is my literary Facebook. When I'm reading, I sometimes wonder, does anyone actually understand this? Am I crazy? With this brilliant tool, I know I'm not alone. And then finally, hypothesis makes reading visible. And this, I think, is, is something new and something very relevant to our um, conversation today about grading. Uh, I'm sure many of you who teach have wondered before whether your students have done the assigned reading. Uh, well, one of the oft-repeated testimonials from professors using hypothesis is that collaborative annotation lets them know that students have done it. There's a trace of their presence uh, in the text. And this isn't just a matter of making sure they do their reading. It's about seeing how they've done their reading, uh, where students are confused uh, and might need some kind of inter intervention, where they're excited um, and might need some uh, guidance in how to, to develop that excitement into ideas for a paper or something like that. Um, and also enabling the teacher to be present uh, in the margins to see uh, how students are, are, are reading and, and be there with them for that process. Uh, the greater functionality we've added will be, and be demonstrating today brings further visibility to the reading process, um, technically by enabling a clearer view of individual annotation activity, but also pedagogically in that we can focus in and better teach uh, essential skills that are practiced in the process of reading and annotating. So as a, Linda Parsons at Ohio State says, student annotations give me a window to their thoughts and understandings that I couldn't access otherwise. I wouldn't get this depth of interaction in a thread of discussion. And indeed, uh, a lot of folks compare us to a discussion forum and a kind of ev evolution of the discussion forum, um, where those discussions are taking place on top of a text um, rather than in some separate tab. They're more authentic. They can be student driven. They're not just sort of teacher prompt student response. They're really more like discussion. In addition to the sort of active deep reading that annotation is known for, there are other things that sort of arise out of the way that annotation is practiced online. And one of the big ones is, is collaboration. Students are annotating together or collaborating deeply. They're learning to work together to both comprehend information and create knowledge in ways that can be applied beyond the reading of course material. 
and again, this is also something that we can look closely at now that we have uh, the grading functionality that we've, or more easily look closely at now that we have the grading functionality that we're launching. Um, and also the, the work that they're doing, all this knowledge that they're creating is collecting a kind of dynamic portfolio that follows them from course to course and can be mined at different points in their academic careers. Um, so they have this archive of all their annotations that uh, is useful to them as, uh, as students moving through a, a course of study, but also uh, very, very interesting for, for faculty uh, at different levels um, to look at, to, 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 to see their growth and development, and also uh, possibly you know, tutors and administrators and others that, that might have access to that content. And just briefly, as I as always like to point out, you know, this isn't just an ed tech thing. It's not just a tool for the classroom that gets thrown away at the end of the term. Um, we're building a tool and all of you can sign up outside of the LMS for Hypothesis account and begin annotating your local newspapers online. Um, because we have this, we are cultivating and building a tool that is for, and a practice that is for the health of the internet, that is for the kinds of practices uh, and skills that we develop in school, close reading, collaboration, listening to each other, creating knowledge uh, together. We're developing a tool that's for the classroom, but also uh, for the web. All right, hypothesis in the LMS. Uh, last December, we launched uh, our LMS app. Um, we had tremendous uh, response from the education community. Uh, we have a pilot program with uh, over 20 schools now uh, piloting the technology. This spring, we'll be moving our first pilots into, into production, all based on this LMS app. Um, <clears throat> those of you that have been using Hypothesis for a while know that you can use that wild app for education purposes, but you're asking a lot of your students and yourself to do so. You're asking them to sign up for an account. Um, you're asking them to download a browser extension. You're probably asking them to switch from whatever uh, crappy uh, browser they use to a better one like Firefox or Chrome. Uh, so there's a lot of onboarding um, that's, that's involved and you're not getting to the beautiful stuff I was talking about above the collaborative annotation. Um, and the LTI app, the LMS app, really through single sign-on streamlines all that so you can get straight down to that good work of reading the assigned readings and discussing them in the margins. For those that aren't familiar, if Hypothesis is active uh, on, a, on a text, um, the LMS app enables you to activate Hypothesis on select text. And if it's, if it's active, then um, you can simply select text, highlight text to, to annotate. Um, you can annotate publicly, you can annotate privately, you can highlight. Um, and in the LMS, all annotations are default to um, a private group. You can apply to annotations. So the idea here really is about discussion threads um, and uh, you can annotate in, in private groups, as I mentioned. All right, before we get into the showstopper of gradebook integration, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the other features uh, that we're developing based largely on feedback. Um, and those are uh, groups and sectioning. Right now there's a single course group provision for a course uh, based on, on the, the, the course shell and the LMS. And we've, from feedback, both from classes big and small, but especially from larger classes, you know, 300 person physics class can't have all 300 students annotating the same text. So um, we're gonna have some mechanism, whether it's through LTI, uh, through Canvas groups, uh, or the grouping structure and other LMSs, to create smaller groups, um, sections uh, within, within a course. And we're gonna develop a better way for students and teachers to view annotations across texts. I call these annotation portfolios, but they're really, you know, one way to think about them is just activity streams, a place where uh, Nate could go and see all his annotations from one course and another course all in one place across documents, across time. Um, and then finally, learning analytics. Um, and really this just means sort of what, what data points uh, are interesting to faculty and students about how they've been annotating. You have the intimacy of conversation within annotation, um, but uh, what does that conversation look like at a distance? You know, how many annotations are students creating? How many replies? Which students are more of repliers than an annotators? Which threads are the deepest um, that have had the most interaction? Uh, which texts have had the most annotations on them. And we're learning along with teachers about what, and, and students about what data points are interesting in this regard and, and what, what, we, what we can say about them for research and for how they can change a student's practice if they notice something about their annotation behavior or um, how, how teachers preparing uh, class material. 
um, and how it might affect their, their practice as well. Um, all right, before I go into demoing um, the hypothesis grader, how it works, I wanna talk about the why of grading annotations. Um, you know, making annotations social was already a pretty radical move. This was, you know, for centuries, a very private practice. Um, and it's one thing to ask students to share their first impressions uh, with a text, uh, with their classmates and with instructors. It's a whole other thing to say that those first impressions uh, are now accessible. Uh, I'll start with a quote from the great, late great American literary critic Robert Scholes. We normally acknowledge, however grudgingly, that writing must be taught and continue to be taught from high school to college and perhaps beyond. We accept it, I believe, because we can see writing and we know that much of the writing we see is not good enough, but we do not see reading. We see some writing about reading to be sure, but we do not see reading. So reading, I would argue, um, and I think it's not just a single sort of academic or scholastic practice that is contained there, um, we, you know, the reading material is the input, um, and the output is some summative assessment. And what happens in the middle is a sort of black box. We don't necessarily always focus closely on or pay close attention to how students are processing reading, how they're annotating, how they're discussing their readings, um, and how all of that builds into some more traditional summative assessment like a test or a paper. And I think making annotations gradable enables us to look a little bit more closely into this black box. Um, not just about how students are performing, but about what aspects of reading, comprehension, analysis um, need to be more closely taught, uh, not just more closely practiced. So why grade annotations? Well, first of all, you don't have to. In all the LMSs, uh, you can choose to make an annotatable reading either gradable or not gradable. So it can be a completely low stakes, not entering into the gradebook kind of thing. But now we've rolled out this ability to make it align in the gradebook um, and to um, expedite the ability to send that, that, that grade to the gradebook. Um, I do think, you know, if you're asking students to annotate, it's, you, you should at least be reading those annotations and interacting. Um, and, uh, you know, whether or not it's a big stakes formal grade, acknowledging them in the, for, in the form of giving them literally credit for it, um, I think is, is uh, you know, at least for some, I would argue is, is, uh, is valuable. Um, I also think the work that they're doing is a set of fundamental scholastic skills of encountering a text and processing a text, working with others to understand a text, build knowledge beyond a text. All these are fundamental scholastic skills that can be developed with practice and guidance. And maybe it's to my, my own uh, shame, but I would just hand out the, the marginalia poem and say, I look forward to seeing your final papers <laughs> at the end of the term. Um, and you know, you should, you should be reading closely, you should be annotating, you should be highlighting, you should be finding key passages, you should be understanding what they are, you should be identifying literary elements in them. Again, I was an English teacher. Um, you should be adding analysis that, that connects these different passages in a text. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time teaching all those skills. I spent a lot of time assessing them, um, almost punitively sometimes, I would say, in, in grading a paper. Um, but I think the gradebook functionality, and hypothesis generally, but also the gradebook functionality, offers a, a, us new ways to, to really hone in and teach those skills. Um, so you can identify and read and then writing skills to be developed and assessed. Maybe you're focusing on summary, maybe you're focusing on paraphrase, again, it depends on the level of teaching that you're at, maybe you're focusing on more higher order uh, analysis. Um, and you can also identify disciplinary practices. One thing hypothesis does not want to do is tell you, first of all, we don't want to tell you that you should grade, you have the option not to, but I also want to tell you how to grade. For every single assignment, discipline, age level, it's gonna be different how folks are leveraging annotation, what is expected of students out of annotation. And so we don't have any prescription around how things should be assessed. We do, in partnership with, with faculty and instructors, hope to build a uh, repository of rubrics and assignments that can guide folks um, in how they um, assign annotation and assess annotation. Um, but really, you know, if you have ever played with hypothesis, it's just this open little bubble that um, you, know, any, you can do anything in. Uh, you can write anything, you can put images and video in, and so it's really dependent on the specific educational context about how that space is used. All right, 
without further ado, uh, really quick shout out to Allison. I don't know if she made it today. She said she was going to on Twitter, um, but we, we, we didn't get this, uh, the blog post that we published last week or the webinar that you're watching now out in time ahead of the, the development team on our, at our company. They released the gradebook functionality, which is great. People have been asking for it. They've been chomping at the bit for it for a while. And so some teachers noticed um, uh, this cropping into their workflow already. And already there was praise from Allison at, um, at Colgate about how much easier it was going to make her workflow. So for those that choose to assess student annotations, um, the, the, the hypothesis grader is going to make their workflow a lot easier. So this is what it looks like in SpeedGrader Canvas, Canvas SpeedGrader. We've had this up for a while, actually. We launched this ahead of the semester. Um, and it's specific to Canvas because of the uh, Canvas SpeedGrader functionality. And what you see is um, the red box there is from Canvas. It's the SpeedGrader functionality. It allows you to enter a grade uh, and a comment. And what Hypothesis does in conjunction with SpeedGrader is focus in on a particular student's contributions to the broader class conversation. So right here, I'm just seeing a student named Teacher's Pet's annotations on this Mary Oliver poem. There are maybe dozens of annotations and threads from all 25 of my students on this particular poem. And I can see that in one view. Um, and you can see I can punch uh, show all there and, um, and see them all even in this view. Um, but this allows me to really focus in on Teacher's Pet's contributions, provide some feedback, and if I want to, uh, a grade. And again, in, in Canvas, how I grade that pass, fail, um, out of 100, whatever, um, out, of, out of whatever number um, is up to me uh, through, through, through the LMS, not through Hypothesis. And for those that are interested in getting started, that is a guide to, to grading in, uh, in Canvas down there at the bottom. It doesn't look all that different in the other LMSs. We had to de we developed specifically for Canvas first, and then we have a broad LTI uh, hypothesis grader that looks quite the same across the other LMSs. Um, this is Blackboard, but there's really no indication that this is Blackboard, except for the fact that I've said so um, because I've cut out the uh, you know the the framing that that, that Blackboard uh, might put around it uh, for a cleaner view here. Um, and if you are in Blackboard, that, is, that link up there is a link to the Blackboard grading uh, tutorial. So you can, um, you can go there if you want to get started grading in, uh, in Blackboard. And again, it doesn't look all that different in, in D2L either. I am going to show it, uh, demo it live in Moodle, um, which again, doesn't look all that different. But basically what you have in these views is you see the text. And at the top, we've done our own kind of imitation of speed grader where a teacher can toggle through student by student um, and view just their annotations, focusing on just their annotations, and then send a grade uh, to the gradebook. And for now, this first version is default um, you know, out of 10. And it converts into whatever you've um, set the, uh, the grading scheme to be um, uh, yourself in your own LMS. And I'll, I'll show this in a second, but one neat thing for those that are in Moodle is that um, in all the other LMSs, and this is something we're working to, to work around and, and move beyond, but in all the other LMSs, the teacher is the one that chooses the reading and adds hypothesis. There's no mechanism yet for a student to choose a reading um, and upload it with hypothesis to the learning management systems, um, except for in Moodle, um, because of their sort of social constructive, uh, construct, constructivist, um, philosophy behind the technology, they have a feature that allows a, a teacher to hand over the kind of teacherly privileges of an assignment to a student, meaning that they can create a hypothesis assignment that is unconfigured with a, a, a reading yet to be selected. Um, and then the student can do the selection process. So a couple of examples of how this could work, and there's a blog link down here at the bottom of this slide. Um, uh, you know, I, I might be teaching a poetry course. I might have selected largely the, the readings for the courses. Um, but then at the end, I want students to go and find a poem that they bring to the, to the group and have, um, and, and, and have their classmates uh, annotate. And so here's an example of students that have selected, you know, selecting poems. You could also obviously do this with student papers uh, for peer review where there's a unconfigured assignment for each 
uh, student's paper um, that the that the teacher creates, but then the teacher the students upload the papers um, themselves. All right, let's jump over into live demo of Moodle. All right, no longer in the slide space. I'm looking at poems here. Um, this is a course called Poetry 101. And which poem did I want to look at? Let's see, let's look at David Berman's Snow. It opens in a new window. The hypothesis sidebar pops out. Um, I can see annotations on the document for those that are unfamiliar. Um, select text and given the option of highlighting or annotating. Um, actually this one, it's not letting me annotate right now because I think I'm, uh, it's a completed assignment, but um, I can see that there have been annotations created by um, two students, a Moodle student and a Lev Vygotsky. Um, hey Jeremy, sorry to interrupt, but can you uh, zoom in on your screen a little bit more so people can see some of that? Better? Yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks, Nate. Uh, so right now I'm viewing all annotations. And then again, up here, there is a little box for the grading. Um, I've already graded Moodle student for six out of 10, um, but I haven't yet graded Lev. Um, so I'll go ahead and grade, grade Lev, give him a nine out of 10 um, and submit that grade. And then let's go to the grades over here in another tab, refresh. And there you have, I just entered Lev's grade. I got a lot of grading to do. It's that time of year, right, folks? I gotta go back and grade all these paper, these, uh, these annotation assignments. Um, but it's as simple as that. Uh, this will appear on any um, assignments that have been marked for grading. The way that you do that in Moodle, and we have, again, tutorials for all of these, but the way that you do that in Moodle, um, and there's a way in every single LMS to do this, um, is here to say that you want to accept grades from the tool. It's a little different in every LMS, but I could toggle this off and make this an ungradable assignment um, as some of these other uh, readings are. So this one, for example, um, we won't see the grader at the top of this one, I think successfully. Um, there we go. No, grade, no grading up here because I've designated it a non-gradable annotation assignment. All right, um, I, this, I only have a couple minutes left here uh, to talk and then if there's you know, questions to surface, Nate and my, Michael can do that or if there's folks that are still in attendance, um, you know, feel free to, to ask questions uh, coming up. But I did just wanna briefly mention um, the Hypothesis LMS app is, is, is free to install and test and use in a, in a limited way in, in a single course, maybe for a semester, like a pioneer and teacher that wants to sort of to check it out. Um, but thereafter, we ask uh, schools to join our pilot program so an institution can evaluate the technology for purchase or to move straight if they're already convinced uh, to purchase. Um, and we have a, a pricing model uh, that's flexible that allows schools to, to buy in at, at different levels. But the pilot program, um, should I refresh this now? We're adding new pilots every single day. Um, it's that time of year where folks are signing up. Um, for the, uh, for the spring semester. And it's certainly not too late from our perspective to bring on uh, new pilots. Um, but these are some of the schools that are already piloting. Uh, I welcome conversations with, with you and, and folks at your school institutions to talk about a spring pilot or you know, work through getting the LMS app installed and, and testing it out and looking to pilot in the spring uh, or in the summer or in the fall. Um, but please reach out if you're interested. The pilot program um, provides technical support, obviously. We have a great knowledge base. Michael is a large contributor there. Um, and we offer, you know, uh, personalized uh, or individualized uh, technical configuration sessions and tier one support for instructors uh, and staff. Um, but we also provide tech pedagogical support to whatever degree your institution wants us to sort of run the pilot and work closely with students, with teachers. Um, we're happy to do that. Michael's a former educator. I'm a former educator. Caitlin, who's on our success uh, to team, uh, was an instructional designer at NYU. So we all have a background in the academic technology and education space. Um, and we're here to talk, uh, you know, uh, to obviously to, to introduce and, and orient folks to, to, the, to the platform. Uh, which is a tool, 
um, but also to, to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with, with teachers about how to apply annotation in their particular context. So um, I, I think it's a great added feature, not just to sort of give you the technology and, and uh, leave you alone with it, but to really be there and make sure every teachers and their classes are successful with annotation. And then finally, we really are trying to develop a community out of this group of schools. Um, if you're a frequenter of uh, the, the major uh, ed tech conferences and teaching with technology conferences, um, we will be uh, doing presentations at some of those as part of the formal conference proceedings, but also sometimes piggybacking and doing our own, what we call annotate ed events um, in conjunction with these partners. And I think it's a, it's a valuable thing for different schools um, you know, instructional designers at different schools, but also say composition instructors at different schools to collaborate across institution and the annotate ed events and, um, and community really provide a forum for folks that are interested in sharing best practices, uh, sharing struggles, um, collaborating on research and publication and presentation and things like that. Um, so yeah, I encourage folks to, to think about a spring pilot. Um, you can go ahead and install the app today for testing as I mentioned. Um, but the, the pilot program is meant to be really uh, lightweight in its ask of institutions. Uh, if you are an instructor yourself and you want to use it, then you're a third of the way there to getting our minimum uh, required instructors for a pilot cohort. So you may be able to just go down the hall and grab a couple colleagues to, to have yourself a pilot cohort and then get a, somebody in the LMS office or in the Center for Teaching and Learning to sign off on, on making the pilot official. Um, and then we'll come in and, and take care of a lot of the programming uh, from there. So uh, you can click on Spring Pilot there for more information about the Spring Pilot. You can click on Install the App to, to get the app installed. And I think I've been talking enough. I don't know if there have been questions or, or there are questions now, but I want to sort of open it up at this point. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, we've gotten uh, some interesting questions. Um, one is around the degree to which um, Hypothesis integrates with Canvas's rubric tool, and Michael has been answering and providing some information around that in the chat. I don't know if there's uh, more that you know about that you want to add, or maybe Michael wants to say something verbally. My understanding is that, go ahead, Michael. I was just going to sum up, I mean, what I wrote in there. So this is, it seems like this is a Canvas issue that affects all, all tools that integrate in the same way that Hypothesis integrates with uh, Canvas. And the workaround is, start off by making an assignment that is not linked to an external tool, put a rubric in it, go back and edit the assignment, and then change the, change the link to external tool and add hypothesis. Um, I also in the chat added a link to where Canvas users can upvote the idea that Canvas fixes this issue and make sure that you can add rubrics to external tools. And so if you're a Canvas, a Canvas user, as Nate is saying in the chat, please click on that link and vote for it. And, and Canvas has said if it gets to the top 10% of requested features, they'll implement it. So. Hmm. Yeah, I thought oh, I just thought that um, that rubrics are something that you add to that little speed grader sidebar as a um, just as a reference in a sense. I think I've seen people with hypothesis assignments that definitely had the rubric in place. Uh, yeah, I'm not off the top of my head. I'm, I'm not sure about like adding it just speed grader, but I, there's a like codified like adding. Uh, 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 rubrics to assignments in, 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 in Canvas. And unfortunately, with like LTI tools like ours, you have to use this workaround to have it be there. Uh, but it does work if you do the workaround. I did see a question while Nate's digging for other ones um, about Canvas files. So in Canvas, there's a unique feature actually that we'll be bringing to the other LMSs, which allows you to grab a PDF from the course repository, from the course files. Um, it does require a developer key at install. Um, we do use, uh, we do allow, or we do hypothesis enable to work with a scoped dev key. That all may be above some folks' uh, heads in terms of the LMS LTI of it all, but um, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is that when you install the tool, you need to take one extra step to make sure that the PDF, uh, they, that the instructors will have access to those Canvas files. I just Great. dropped a link. Oh, sorry. I just dropped a link into the chat for our knowledge base article on how to get the Canvas file picker button added. Um, if it's not there, it's something you may have to pass along to your IT administrator or something like that if you are not that person already. 
Hey, uh, while we're just on that subject, Leo just asked about annotating Canvas pages, uh, you know, the native Canvas yeah. pages. So you can annotate a native Canvas page with our wild app, as I call it, uh, the browser extension. Um, it wouldn't be tied into the, uh, you know, LMS integration. Um, and you can also, if you have permission um, to add JavaScript to a Canvas uh, instance or Canvas course, I think you can add Hypothesis so that Hypothesis is sort of native to, um, to the course, if that makes sense. Uh, this is like a WordPress app where you can basically turn Hypothesis on across a WordPress blog. Um, but again, that would be separate from the LMS integration. I totally see the value of what you're asking for, Leo, and we get asked about this a lot, um, especially with some of the cool things that folks like Remy Kalir are doing with annotating the syllabus, which of course you could upload as a PDF and, and make an annotatable assignment using an external tool. Um, but more often, some of that content is in the pages of a Canvas course, uh, Canvas course modules, and would be neat for students to be able to annotate, especially about you know, what, what assignments they found confusing and such. Um, uh, but, uh, but that's not yet connected to the, um, to, the, to the LMS integration. It's something we're looking into, though. It's, it's all a matter of how where and how external tools like Hypothesis can play in the LMS space or in the Canvas space in this case. Hey, Jeremy, there's a couple of other questions lined up in our Q&A tool here, or Zoom's Q&A tool, I should say. Um, so Victoria had asked, um, <clears throat> She's wondering, and you addressed this a little bit already, but maybe you want to say a little bit more about the degree to which a hypothesis account inside the LMS might be connected to what we're calling a in the wild hypothesis account outside the LMS. Uh, is this from Victoria? Yeah. Um, so right now, um, the hy hypothesis LMS accounts uh, are separate from um, hypothesis wild accounts. So when I was in Moodle there, I don't know that my name was Jeremy Dean, but I'm a different Jeremy Dean or it's a different Jeremy Dean account than my, you know, Jeremy Dean account that I use to annotate the Austin American Statesman down here in Texas, uh, my local newspaper. Um, they're, they're separate. Um, it is part of the, uh, you know, midterm roadmap to connect those so that like with a Gmail account, I might be able to toggle between my hypothesis Gmail account and my personal Gmail account at ease, depending on where I was. Um, we also, you know, I very much want to make um, student work within Hypothesis within the LMS exportable. So even before we may make a, a mechanism for the Jeremy Dean in Canvas uh, and the Jeremy Dean on the web to be connected, there should at least be a way for Jeremy Dean in a Canvas to grab all my annotations and take them with me. Um, so there's a couple different ways that we're trying to address the connectivity between uh, annotation and hypothesis as exists in the LMS and annotation and hypothesis as they exist uh, on the web, but very much part of our long-term goal to make people annotate the world um, to, 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 to connect those things. Um, oh, did you want to say something more about that? No, I was just looking down at Martha's question. Is that oh, uh, yeah, so Martha's up next. Right, so Martha, um, what happens to them if the LMS changes, courses are deleted, or the annotated content is removed? So the first two pieces, um, but sorry, the last two pieces there. Basically, you know, my, my hypothesis Canvas account, there's an identity to it. There's some gobbledygook number that, that, that everything is attached to. My annotations are attached there my uh, reference that I've highlighted are, are attached there. Um, and that connectivity is robust. So another question went away. Um, that connectivity is robust. So Jeremy Dean and Canvas will always, you know, have some connection stored in our databases between Jeremy Dean's annotations and the references that he highlighted. Um, even if a course disappeared, um, even I forget what the third part of the question was, let me just jump back. Uh, if the course disappears or um, the annotated content is removed, that you know, just as on the web, all my annotations and the reference are connected to my account, even if the web page disappears, the web page changes. Now, if the course is deleted and the annotated content is removed, currently there's no way for me to view those annotations. But that's you know up next in our our 
our roadmap is the place where Jeremy Dean and Canvas can go and view all his annotations in Canvas um, at an institution across documents, across courses. And there, it wouldn't be affected by whether that course disappears or whether that content has changed. They would be the annotations I created with their initial reference. Um, if the LMS changes, that's a lot more problematic. So don't change your LMS. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of other reasons probably. I know everybody's doing that, but um, uh, yeah, that would, that, would, that would be disruptive. Um, that's, that's an eventuality we haven't yet built for. You know, what happens when uh, Plymouth State uh, changes from Blackboard to Canvas? Um, you know, again, those annotations aren't lost, but how Martha Burtis and Blackboard at Plymouth State and Martha Burtis at Canvas and Plymouth State are connected, uh, the problem may be solved by that same idea of just having a way to link multiple accounts. But currently, um, if, if Plymouth State was switching to Canvas like today, all the annotations in Blackboard would just sort of still be there, um, if that makes sense. And just for Kate, it doesn't, it works with Pressbooks, but it's a different integration than LMS integration. So if your university has Pressbooks, um, you know, the hypothesis uh, can be activated in Pressbooks natively. Um, but again, that's a situation where, you know, uh, forget, it, was, it was, I think a Kate that said, you know, you're gonna be Kate Ellis in, in Pressbooks with hypothesis and then different Kate Ellis in, um, in Canvas with, with, uh, with hypothesis. But again, like the other questions, um, we're going to, you know, part of our vision for how annotation would work on the, on the web and the different contexts in which one might annotate um, as a professional, as a, as a, you know, individual, you know, denizen of the internet, um, connecting those accounts, different LMS accounts, wild web accounts, LMS accounts, LMS accounts, WordPress accounts, LMS accounts, Pressbook accounts, LMS accounts, Scalar accounts, making some connectivity between all those is definitely part of the, the goal. Hey, so before we get to Cecilia's great question, which could be really interesting and we could spend some time on, um, do you see Joseph's question in, about non-gradable assignments? Yeah, so the way to give feedback um, would be as annotate. So yeah, the question to repeat it for everybody else, is in a non-gradable assignment, would the instructor just have to give feedback as annotations or in a separate channel? Uh, right, it would have to be in, uh, in, uh, in in an annotation, which would then have to be, you know, public to the group. So you wouldn't want to give a piece of, uh, you know, private feedback in that context. And if you want to do private feedback or more extended feedback, or feedback that might not be relevant to the group, yeah, you would do that in a separate channel. Uh, for now, I would love to be honest, Joseph, uh, to have a way, I mean, we've thought about this a couple of different ways. One might be a way for you to respond to a student in a kind of direct message way where you annotate and it's really just for their eyes. That's something we've thought about. Um, so that may be something that would appear where, you know, your response to a student in an annotation wouldn't actually be view viewable to everybody except for the student that you added if we, if we do it like Twitter. So we've run out of questions in the Q&A, but Cecilia brought up a great uh, kind of topic in the chat there about, um, suggestions on how instructors can prepare their class for using hypothesis for the first time. Michael did provide a link that you'll see there about it, but Jeremy, you've, you've done this a lot. Maybe you have some ideas. Um, I do have a lot of ideas. Um, and I think, you know, the number one idea is to join the pilot program and then Michael and I will work intimately with your faculty to, 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 to talk through that situation and, and have that chat. But, um, I mean, I think it's important to set up the why of why you're doing it, you know, like that this isn't just a, um, that there's a bigger stakes than just fulfilling an assignment, even if you are grading or if you're not grading, especially like that this is for, you know, their edification that, you know, reading and annotating is important. You can give them a Billy Collins poem and say, this is how you become a, a sort of owner of, of the material you're looking at, how you become an active learner. Um, uh, I think there's also things you can do to talk about uh, the etiquette of commentary how to respond to each other civilly. Um, there's some resources on our website for that that maybe somebody can drop in around sort of productive um, commentary practices in classrooms. Um, the other thing that I think is important to talk about is just kind of the, the mechanics of annotation, talking about like 
you know, not highlighting a whole page, <laughs> uh, highlighting some discrete piece of text that is, um, that you're going to say something focused about. Um, just helping students decide when to respond to an existing annotation or creating their own annotations can be overlapping. Um, but if you're really saying something in line with what somebody else has already said about an area of text, why not just reply? It's going to make for a cleaner experience for everybody. Um, a lot of it can be very disciplinary specific or uh, skill level specific. Um, as I said, some folks are using this for to practice paraphrase, which isn't particularly discursive, but for students that are new to paraphrase, it can be a very powerful way to visualize um, uh, the, the act of paraphrase, how to make something, say something in different words than um, adjacent text. Um, so yeah, I, I would also, you know, I probably start off that conversation in a pilot uh, cohort meeting by asking, you know, what are your goals for annotation? What are the struggles you have or the, or the learning goals that you're hoping to address through the mechanism of annotation? Cecilia, um, I could also activate your mic if you wanted to speak verbally, or if anyone else did, raise your hand and I can uh, actually enable you to speak too. Or happy to address any other questions. So we've got one more in the Q&A here um, from Victoria. Ah, uh, any chance that annotation of images and graphs might be on your development plan? It's definitely on the development plan. Um, it's not in the near term, but we've already done some work on image annotation. Um, to, uh, so there's already some groundwork laid for, to, for us to release that. But, um, you know, once you get into the, just the text annotation and the LMS and all the possibilities here, um, it, it's going to be a, a struggle for resources to decide what to do next. If we move to an image annotation or do we, you know, create an export mechanism that allows the student to start writing from their uh, annotations um, in, a, in a kind of paper-like way. So, um, but it's definitely always been on the uh, roadmap and, and one of our goals to annotate images and video actually. Hey, I'm just putting in a link to um, how to schedule a um, session with you. Oh, great, yeah. Jeremy, because I think a lot of people might want to do that. Um, <clears throat> But if you want to give a little spiel about kind of how to get in touch and, and what you might do with folks um, in, a, in a more, uh, you know, a meeting with just, just you and them and their people from their school, that might help. Yeah, well, I just put my uh, contact information on the screen here. And you can also see the link to this uh, slide deck again. Um, there's uh, links to the grading tutorial, the grading knowledge base on the individual's uh, slides above. So do grab this if you want an easy way to get back to find out how to set up the grading in Moodle. Um, you know, reach out no matter what the context is. Right now we have a, a big push to get folks using the LMS app, um, to get folks in the pilot program. Um, I'm very focused on, on signing and launching these pilots at schools and I think it's a great way to start your uh, involvement. But no matter who you are, where you are, uh, I, I, to a fault, we'll never turn down a conversation with an educator about annotation. Um, so just go ahead and reach out no matter what your context, even if you're some rogue, uninstitutional, un uninstitutionally affiliated or multi-institutionally affiliated uh, lover of annotation, um, I'd love to chat. So it uh, looks like folks may have run out of questions. Uh, no need to keep anybody longer if you do want to take off, but we're also happy to stick around till the top of the hour, um, 10 o'clock Pacific, one o'clock. Did I miss anything you want to share? I will just say to, uh, to Michael's credit that, you know, we have a great, uh, one of the things that our users often rave about is our support um, responsiveness. Uh, as I said, we're educators by training um, almost all of us, um, and Michael, you know, mans our support uh, uh, channel and is very, very responsive even after hours. Um, so you may be in touch with Michael if you uh, run into an issue and he will surely do everything he can to help you out. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I did want to say if folks are, um, 
obviously you should talk to Jeremy um, under for any reason, <laughs> but if you have strictly like support related stuff and you want to go right to your support channel, um, you can email support at hypothesis. You can also schedule a screen share with me and I'm just going to drop the link for scheduling screen shares with me in, into the chat. But uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a good thing to start, I think with Jeremy, but if you're just like, how do I, what was that link for that campus file picker thing? Again, feel free to, feel free to write uh, directly to me at support. And especially questions around, you know, getting the app installed. If you're figuring out how to, um, what, if you're the LMS admin or working with an LMS admin, like would be a great resource. And also if you already have the app installed, but you're trying to figure out how to turn the grading on or how the grading is, is working with your courses, Mike would be a great resource as well.